some guys have all the luck, and there's certain things, and the universe just aligns against you. But mine has to do with technology. So, I'm in Hawaii, it's beautiful, but I want to show that off to you guys. I think there's things that you would think is interesting. I think where the ocean is and where you can see whales, I think the pool in the backyard. Got some cool bikes that, that operate on a battery and things like this, but I've never seen those things before. We got golf carts out here. It's beautiful. It's this really beautiful special air, and I wanted to show you. So I got this handheld camera, everything's going my way. I was actually outside in an outdoor shower. I was, I was bathing and washing myself while making a video, right? Like, that's clever. I'm not saying I'm setting the world on fire, but within the Google algorithm, a dude in a shower that pops up outdoor in Hawaii, it's gonna, it's gonna do okay. So of course, what happens with my fancy handheld camera? What happens? The battery goes dead. And I don't mean the battery's dead like you gotta charge it. I mean, all of a sudden, the internal battery no longer works. So it must be plugged into a wall to operate. And I got a cord here that's about five feet, which means all the cool things I want to show you, unless they're within five feet of me, simply isn't gonna happen. Now, I made a video, and I'm never gonna have you the, I'm never gonna hand you the answers, but I want you to know where to look. I do. So, I told you, if you wanna understand this business, there's certain things you have to do. If you understand a few certain things, it will change, it will, the dots that will be connected and your understanding of what we're doing here and why will change drastically. Now, I wouldn't expect you as the fan to wanna to know that. I don't think that's fascinating or interesting. I really don't. I love to watch the sport of gymnastics. I remember when Dominic Mociano and the girls were winning all the medals. It was so fun. I don't understand the economics of gymnastics, nor am I interested. I mean, I just offer you that from a standpoint that I wouldn't blame you for not caring, but there is no athlete in sport today who is listened to by fellow athletes more than me, more than me. Every single athlete under contract comes to this channel to see what they can learn. And it's wildly relevant if you don't understand what we're doing and why. You can't begin to manipulate it. You're talking about promotion, you talk about politics, you talk about navigating, you talk about hustling, manipulating, any, any word that you want to use, right? Like manipulate seems to be a, a, a bad one, but I use it just to grab your attention. It's accurate. You have to know the system. You must first know the system. And I made a video. I gave you guys a few instances, okay? You gotta find out the question that Stephen Morocco asked me. I made this public. I told you guys this a hundred times. It's on video. You gotta find out that question. And then you gotta tie that question from 2012. You've gotta tie it to slap, okay? Big clue. That'd be one thing. That'd be one thing that if you could connect those dots, you would begin to understand. Next one would be the ceremonial weigh-in. Why do we do a ceremonial weigh-in? And I will leave it at that. But you will start to, you will understand things differently. You turn your head and go, oh, I made a video on this. I was telling you this. But ultimately, I then had a challenge which had to do with my favorite announcement in a meaningful period of time, which is that we're resurrecting the BMF belt. Oh, and by the way, we found the right two guys. So ultimately the question would be, why? Why are we resurrecting it? And when I tell you how important it is that you understand the answer to that, if you are Gaethje or Poirier, once you have the answer, you're gonna have very clear marching orders of what to do with that. George Masvidal did it. George Masvidal to this day, I don't think, I don't think he knows why he never defended that belt. I don't think he knows why it was a one and done. I don't think he knows why it was never discussed again until he left. I don't think that he knows because he's a smart guy. George is a very smart guy. But you know, smart guys, they miss him sometimes, right? And it's important that Chandler, or I apologize, Gaethje and Poirier figured out now. Made a video on this. Had a buddy reach out to me, said, Chill, I wanna take the challenge. I wanna tell you why. I wanna tell you why the BMF is getting resurrected. He said, these guys are two BMFs. These guys are two main eventers. 
these guys are rematching, but they can't rematch for a number one contendership, but that's a number one contender style fight. So instead of doing that and affecting the rankings, you bring in these old dogs, you, you show these veterans the respect, you put up the BMF belt. Okay, great, I mean, that's market. I didn't ask you how we we're going to market the match. Though everything you just said there is, is, is 101 and I appreciate it. You know what? I really don't have time for this. I, tru I truly don't. I truly don't. I love that somebody at least took a guess. And the only reason that it does matter, okay? Poirier and Gaethje, one of them's gonna win. You don't want to do what Masvidal did, which is to not understand what you've got. Masvidal's a smart guy, and he's a friend of mine. But I've made videos like this. I hinted repeatedly. All he had to do was call me. He knows how to get a hold. All he had to do was call me. Say, Chael, what do you know about this belt that I don't? Now, let me tell you this. There was a guy named Einstein, okay? And Einstein is somebody like that I could look to as an intellectual. I am who you guys look to as a mentor, right? I'm the one you, you go and tell, I know this really smart guy, his name is Chiel, right? And I, I appreciate that. But I'll tell you something Einstein did. Einstein became a professor. Did you guys know that about him? Yeah. And Einstein, every class, every test, every year, asked the same question. Do you guys know that? It wasn't one question. This wasn't one of those trick moments. He, he had a test. He had a paper. He had a form. 10, 12, 15, 20, 30, 50. I don't know how many questions there were. It was a normal test. There was no tricks to this. But every year it was the same test. And he'd have the kids and he would test them twice a year. So every class he would do a test. Right around, right around the first of the year. Around that Christmas time. And then towards the end of the year, which just like it is now, was June. Early June. He would test them again. So they have two tests a year. It was the same test. Do you guys know this? So over time, the kids started to catch on. They started to realize, you know, you had a sister that was in the class. She's two years older than you. Now you're coming through. Sister's passing a little something down. It, that same situation's happening now. You, you, you got a brother whose little brother's about to come through. All of a sudden, they start talking. They start to realize the questions that are going to be on the test. So another professor, in fact, the dean, pulled Einstein and said, he said, this is what you got to do. You got to change it. The kids are on to you. The questions are going to be, you have to start changing the questions. And Einstein said, oh, no, I'll, I'll never change. I'll never change the questions. And he said, well, well why? Well, why would you not change the questions? And Einstein told them, because this is science. And the biggest fallacy in science is that it's an absolute. The biggest truth in science is the reason I keep asking the same question. Because over time, with knowledge, the answers change.